I look, I look, I look, I see I see a world of beauty I touch, I touch, I touch, I feel I feel the world around so real And everything I do I dedicate to you Cause you made me I am for you I listen, 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 I hear I hear the words of God so clear I read, I read, I read, I know It helps my knowledge grow And everything we do We dedicate to you Cause you made us We are for you I listen, 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 I hear He sent the prophet to show us the way He made religion perfect that day Peace be upon him, upon him we pray Salatullah wa salamu alay I sleep, I sleep, I sleep, I dream I dream I'm in the garden green. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, was salatu was salamu ala Rasulil Kareem. Brother and sister of the center, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Let me thank Brother Abu Abdullah for inviting me to this center. Although it is very close to Riverside and I've been there for last 30 years. I never had a chance to come here and share with you some evening. It's my fault and I should have come <laughs> many times in the past, but somehow uh, we share a lot of things in Riverside. He introduced me and, uh, well, in my life, I've been teaching mainly physics in the University of California for the last almost 30 years. I'm close to retirement now. And uh, also, I've been teaching uh, Islamic history, fiqh, tafsir in uh, Riverside Center where we have a pretty big size school on Sunday almost sometime between 200 to 300 students up to 10 grade. So, studying both religion and science almost all my life, I still feel like I know very little. It does not uh, make me an expert in science or in Islam. It's a very tough topic, Islam and science. It's a huge topic. If I start speaking, it will go very long, but I'll try to make it short so that I'll focus on what is Islam and what is science and what they are related according to my perception. Maybe I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, you can correct me and may Allah forgive me. Normally, a scientist the community which I met, and I met almost around the world in different countries from Asia, Pakistan, to India, to Europe, to America, to Japan. Uh, I met scientists of all kinds of life and walk. Uh, most of them, I found that they do not believe in religion. Okay, that's very important to understand. Rather, they are very uh, critical about religion. On the other hand, since I have a lot of interaction with great scholars in Islam, uh, like Abu Lala Madhudi, maybe you have heard him, I've even met and learned a lot, lot of things from him and read his books and I think in Pakistan he was one of the great scholars and in also I studied in Madaris and uh, I have a lot of interaction with the ulama and one of the reason was because my grandfather was Imam Masjid, you know, so, and his father from generation, you know, I'm the family of 
imam masajid you know so so from childhood i have the company of ulama and people who used to lead prayer and uh, so i have a lot of interaction with my relatives with friends and when i talk with them they totally disbelieve science either they just take it science as something materialistic something in this world will not give you ajr so totally two different school of thoughts and that bothers me sometimes uh why i thought about why there is a totally one community <coughs> great scientist nobel laureate i even met one of the nobel laureate from pakistan abdul salam who got nobel prize he was very religious whenever he used to give talk he start with ayat from quran but unfortunately he was from md school of thought so in pakistan we do not consider also in islam we do not consider them as muslim so although his name is islamic but he was a great scientist i mean beyond doubt uh so the the question is the first question is why these two scholars one excel in in science they do not believe in existence of god even they think it was just an accident that human being is born by evolution we arrived at this point uh on the other hand the ulama or the scholar of islam they think there is no need to study islam they only focus on uh, quran memorization I memorize fantastic i try to memorize but i could not succeed to memorize all the way part of it then second part is hadith which is Uh, life of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the third thing they go in fiqh which is a f- beautiful subject i have been teaching this and i think uh, most fascinating is fiqh and i think imam abu nifa rahmatullah alai was the first scientist in the muslim umma actually he was the originator of science and i'll explain to you why no discrimination <laughs> <laughs> no no discrimination we love abhi <laughs> so uh so why there is a difference the difference is because both schools do not learn the other subject the madaris ulama uh, they do not learn science and scientists do not learn about religion so they are, there is ignorance on both part and that's why there is a problem and it, my goal today will be to close this gap if i can with my humble effort you know now let's see what science is so i think all of you studied some course of science science is basically study of nature okay that's study of nature by observation by exact measurement and if we can prove or observe or describe or explain in logical sense it is science if we cannot it is not science on the other hand when you talk about religion and i'll focus only on islam without going into great detail because in other religion then there are other factors that come into place in islam we call anybody muslim who says shahada ashhadu an la ilaha illallah ashhadu anna muhammad rasulullah simple as that i believe in allah and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is last messenger and so he is muslim then we go in detail amantu billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rasulihi wal qadri khairihi wa sharrihi min allah taala wal ba's ba'd al maut that's iman mufassal what it says i believe in allah i believe in malaika i believe in books i believe in rasul and wal qadri khairi sharri anything happens good are bad min allah taala it's from allah and last thing is we bath about in mouth that we will die we all know that that's a scientific fact 
so will be revived again just like human being and will answer whatever we do in this world if somebody doesn't believe in that uh, he is not a Muslim now let's go one by one we believe in Allah that there is a superpower controls this universe creator ilaha sustainer we know that this is a belief not the scientific fact from scientific principle this thing cannot be verified anything any theory any idea cannot be verified it's scientifically so that's why it is called belief iman iman we have to believe something which we, we indirectly we can feel there is a superpower around us but if we have seen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala physically in some form then there is no question of iman it is there like this light is there the seats are there so we are sitting here this, this is a reality but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have to believe without seeing without observation that's why it is called iman if you don't believe, you are out of Islam. Second thing, you have to also believe in Malaika. Now, what is Malaika? You know, it's the only thing from Quran and Hadith we know, they are made of noor, light. Well, we know how we are made of. We are made of, you know, some chemical like uh, iron, silicon, uh, calcium, sodium, all those compounds which you can find in the earth. So basically, you take any piece of mud, any you know sand, you will find all those compound compound there and here plus water, uh, plus something we call it ruh. But other than ruh, we are combination of solid material, liquid material, air, and also some light goes through our eyes, light which we observe. But malaika are made of only light. They think, they pray, they are intelligent just like human being. Not as intelligent as human being. That's in Surah Bakra it says. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I'm going to create a, I'm going to make a creation, human. So they said, they are going to create facade in your earth, on the earth, you know, why are you creating? He says, and then he created Adam al-Islam and he asked the question from Malaika, they could not answer, but he asked the question from Adam al-Islam, he answered. So it shows we are more intelligent than Malaika. But Malaika is, a, is, a, is a, some life form, but life form not made of sodium, carbon, all those material elements, rather it's light. So if some Malaika will be here around, we cannot distinguish between him and this light around us. We cannot say, oh, this is Malaika and this is light, because it may be similar looking, but it's some kind of a life form. Just like we are a life form, we take up some material from earth, put together, and Ru goes in and we are human beings. When we die, we just disintegrate into the same, dirt to dirt. So same as Malaika is some kind of light, life, light, some and it is uh, and they can also change their shape because we have some evidences they can also look like human from some time if they want or if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want them so again we do not see malaika we never observed them we never saw in any detector no scientific measurement but we have to believe on that because again it's part of iman the third thing is we have to believe on books all the holy books like Bible, uh, Torah, uh, Zabur, and last book is Quran. We have to believe that. This is Kalam Allah, Kalam of Allah. You know, in the early part there was big discussion, is it makhluk or it is, you know, creation, Mautzilla, big discussion. And you know, we have a history of that. I don't want to go into that, but again, when we believe that this is Kalamullah, it's not written by any human being, again, this is no scientific proof. It's a book written very good. It's, nobody can write. People try to write, but they cannot write. There's a challenge. But again, this book, we believe that it is Kalamullah. Again, part of Iman. No scientific proof. Okay? The only thing is it fits. 
When we come Rasul, prophets, messenger came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some people were chosen among the humans to convey the message from Allah to the human being. And they, when they told us, we believe in it. Just like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told that I am chosen as a prophet, Nabi. Some people believed, some people did not. The only thing, once a uh, once very famous movie star asking me, how do you know there is Allah? I said, well, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa told me. Okay, that's, that's it. And he said, why you believe Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Well, he never told lie. If he never told lie on anything, he is not going to tell lie about God. Allah, you know, whole life, you never tell lie. You cannot make a big lie like that. So, he told, we believe. Again, part of Iman, no scientific principle, but just on the personality that this person never told lie. His character is so strange, so, we all, when, you know, in my Sunday school classes, when I asked from the student, uh, is any student who never lied? Nobody raises his hand. Everyone says, any, I don't want to ask you this question, but if I ask in any majma, in any collection, did you ever lie? Anybody can stand up who says, I never lied. Nobody will say that, including myself. So, see, I'm not going to. But so, Rasulullah was unique. So, he never lied. Nobody ever can say he lied. So if he never lied, when he says, I'm appointed Nabi, he is a Nabi. So is all the Prophet in the past. Again, part of belief. Uh, then the second part, which most of the Muslim forget, you know, they never realize. Is well, Qadr Khari, Vishari, Min Allah Ta'ala. We all go through a tough time in our life, you know, every day. Every day we wake up in the morning till evening, a lot of things goes good, bad. When, when you get good, when you get money, we think we are the genius, you know, we are the smartest people, we deserve it. And when we are having a trouble, we try to put blame on wherever, if not, we put blame on the wife, you know. So, <laughs> This is human nature, okay? nothing wrong, it's common. So, uh, but part of Iman is, well, Qadr Khari, if something happens good to you, it's from Allah. And if you get something, shar, bad, disease, whatever, it's also from Allah. So that's the belief. If you do believe that, then life becomes very simple. It's fantastic. Then you, you get wealth or you get knowledge or whatever position you get, you never get arrogant. You stay humble that. It's not you got it, this money because you deserve it, but it's because Allah gave you and you spend it properly and if you have a tough time, you pray from Allah, pass on from that and it passes on. Next day is a good day, you know. So it makes life fantastic if you believe in this. Walqadri khairi wa sharrahi man Allah ta'ala. The last thing is that, again, no scientific proof, I mean science can say in a different way, interpret in a different way, cause and uh, consequences, you know, there, there is a reason and there is a consequence. So the last thing is, well, ba'asibad al maut that means you will be, after death, we die, we will be restructed again. Again, scientifically never been proved. No scientific evidence whatsoever, no observation. Again, belief. So all that's why it is called Iman. Yeah, we have to believe it. Okay, now comes science. Now, how the science developed? It, even the Greeks were able to develop geome geometry, Pythagorean's theorem, if you know. 4,000 years ago, so 3-4,000 years ago, Pythagorean drawing a triangle and trying to relate each length with each other and it amazes me that you know what makes him think to draw this thing I mean even now people don't worry about all those mathematical equations who cares and this guy is sitting there and drawing and making relations it is an admirable scientist uh, after Greek and even if you look at their architect their building they come up with fantastic architect and all that. Now, if go in Egypt, pyramid, mystery never solved. How on the earth they were able to put huge stones on such a height without any cranes? 
what kind of knowledge those acquired and what happened to that knowledge or that generation is gone destroyed it's in Quran it says you know when nation goes so arrogant and, and there are other signs you know is Quran says Asiru fil earth, go around the earth and you will study what happens to the previous nations but the modern generation our generation Alhamdulillah claims to be on the height of scientific and technolo technological the biggest question which scientists face or think is how this universe is created the whole this this universe how big is I wanted to make a PowerPoint presentation but then I thought it is going to be too big so first of all this universe which we see with the modern telescope which we put in the space and take pictures and you can go on Google and search it uh, universe is too big how big is that just to give you certain knowledge light travel speed of light is 186,000 miles per second 186,000 miles in one second it travels so the dimension they call it how long it will take light to travel from point A to point B in one year one long distance you know so just to give you next example that our sun our star sun is a star the nearest star to our sun, four light years away. That means light from that to us takes four years to arrive with the speed of 186,000 miles per second. So let's say if we build a spaceship, sit down on that and go with the speed of light. First of all, we cannot build. That's physics tells us you cannot. You can, cannot reach the speed of light. Let's say if we do, it will take four years, you know, 186,000 miles. We we'll just give you perspective. You drive a car 45 miles per hour. Okay, per hour. They are 186,000 miles per second. So let's say we have a build a jet, we fly. It will take uh, at least eight years because four years you will accelerate, four years deaccelerate, then you stop. 8 years then if there is some generation some planet like earth and some human being living there you talk and then you come back 16 years come back if it is speed of light believe me there are some scientists they are building or they are designing rockets which will do and that is like we have gone to moon and now we'll go to mars mars we just two days ago we launched this satellite which is going to land on the Mars Mars is very near so but eight months it will take no eight months no longer than that anyway so but it will take so long to go to the next star in our solar system we are the only intelligent life form there is no other Mars is empty no human being lives there no human being at Jupiter uh, last one all the planetary system we have searched only this earth has human being but what Quran says about is there any other earth no 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 what I'm saying is, is the Quran says is there any human like a human being some other generation in the space alien exist no Quran doesn't say anything about that Surah Talaq last ayah last ayah of Surah Talaq you know it says where it says Saba Samawat created seven heavens and the earth and Mislahunna that word Ibn Abbas gives the tafsir of that word and he when he gave tafsir you know he's the only one who gave that tafsir when he was giving the tafsir of that ayah he says to Sahaba you know Ibn Abbas was one of the very first Mufassir one of the most intelligent I respect him the most, you know, I really like him, his tafsir. And he told Sahaba, if I give you the tafsir of this ayah, you will become kafir, non-Muslim. And why you will become non-Muslim? Because you will not believe it. And since it's Quran, if you don't believe Quran, you're out of Islam. And then they said, what, what is the interpretation? He says, at that time, 14, when there was no science yet, he says, you know, there are other 
places in this universe where there are people like us are living. And, the, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Nabi. And it's a Surah Talaq. If you know the Surah Talaq background, the laws of husband and wife relationship and how you separate and what kind of rights a woman has and what kind. So after this law, legal jurisprudence, the last ayah finishes that there are aliens living in this universe, you know, who have the same rules and regulations just like, you know, banahum, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, amru banahum, the same kind of laws are applies to them. So, when this Quran people start learning after reading the Sahaba, they were fascinated. You know, they, they study. That means they were discussing at that time even science. And then after that, even the first generation after Sahaba Tabi'in, Imam Abu Nifa, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi, Rahmatullah and Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, these are the four great Imam who developed the whole fiqh. Fiqh is like how you do wudu, how you pray, how you uh, legal jurisprudence, how you live the whole life according to Quran and Sunnah is called fiqh. They develop. And when they develop this knowledge, this is like a third, it's like uh, 90 years later, after the Hijrah, Imam Abu Nifa was born, you know. He was in Kufa and when he laid down the rules of fiqh, he says the jurisprudence, the first source should be the Quran. If it is said in Quran, it's a law. The second source, he says, the life of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sunnah. Okay? The third source, he says, Ijma. The Sahaba has to agree because they are the most knowledgeable. They got direct knowledge from Rasulullah. They were the student of Prophet Muhammad. What is the fourth rule? Fourth rule which some of the other Imam differ is called Qiyas. And that's why I call Imam Abu Nifa the first scientist. Because that Qiyas is scientific rule. Law of deduction. You know, in the science, there is a law of you observe, you make observation, measurement, put together, and you deduce from them a law, an understanding, you develop understanding. So, if there is any problem in the society where you need some legislation, you cannot find in Quran, you cannot find in Hadith. At Sahaba's time, this problem did not exist. It's later on it was evolved and like right now there are many problems like that. So then you draw this from analogy, law of deduction, from all those knowledge which you have from Quran, Sunnah, you have to put together and you try to legislate, try to form rule for that. So that's why I call Imam Abu Nifa as first scientist. His contemporary, they, they had a problem with that chaos. Al-Hadith and some of those of his time, they said, no, 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 no. You cannot legislate anything other than Quran and Sunnah at all. Well, it turned out over the time, at least in my opinion, he is quite right. I mean, even in the modern time, uh, there are many problems. Like we all carry this smartphones. It has download Quran. Now, another sheikh was giving a lecture, he says, you know, if during Traveeh, Imam is reading, reciting Quran during Traveeh, you can stand behind, open the smartphone and, you know, understand the Quran by reading. I say, you know, wait a minute, you are understanding Quran and then a text message comes from your friend and you write a text message back and, you know, your, your <laughs> salah will be faster. So how can you give, you know, the khutbah in the riverside masjid, you know, <laughs> Sheikh comes. So I said, Sheikh, you should study fiqh, I mean, with the humble, a very great scholar, I don't want to mention. But what I'm trying to say is, this is the problem. If you want to make jurisdiction, should we open a cell phone during prayer or not? There's a problem now in fiqh. So you have to draw analogy, <laughs> deduction, and you have to make opinion, and you say, well, it doesn't make any sense. It has other problem, so don't, shut it down, put it in pocket. I teach to my student, do not open smartphone, just listen to the Quran, what Imam is reciting, whether you understand or not, focus it. There is other time you have 
24 hours whole year understand Quran read understand but prayer is prayer but there are some sahaba some some verdict whatever iPhone because iPod computer <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> so my point is this law of kiyas is extremely important this opens the uh, ittihad so what happened after that this created a thought discussion and it closed many of those different interpretation and only three four school of thought emerged and after that those people who were studying Quran, Hadith, Sunnah, Fiqh they started learning other alum and they started translating from Greek books to Arabic and great scholar was born Al Khwarzmi in 8th century you know have you heard of Al Khwarzmi everybody absolutely, absolutely. you know what his great contribution was he was the one who invented algebra come from algebra he was trying to develop mathematics for uh, laws of inheritance if somebody dies you have left the wealth how it will be distributed so he's calculating it's kind of quite complicated you know you go this much this uh, brother sister son so so he tried to write some kind of formula and out of that he born algebra and people don't know this and it was tough you know x plus y equal to 2 and whenever somebody learns algebra he has a law it's a, one of the toughest subject in science but it turned out it's a mother of all sciences math is the mother of all sciences not only that Al Khwarzmi he was a great scholar by the way first of all he was a great Islamic scholar he was in fiqh and hadith and tafsir he was perfect also this concept of hospital you know, nowadays you have doctors and hospitals we all go get treated it was he who gave this concept that if some people get sick they should go to the hospital and they should be separated you know so that one disease does not spread to the other and he came up with this idea and it's a great uh, success so he kind of put the foundation of modern medicine put the foundation of modern science from 8th century till 16th century this revolutionized the world so Islam basically gave the world all the basis of science math as I said without algebra take out algebra there is no science out of algebra then calculus trigonometry and all the loom developed from there and also from medical science was developing on the side people used to go from Europe from all over the world to study medicine in Iraq and in Syria and then it transferred to Turkey Ottoman Empire in 16th century Zakiuddin Zakyuddin, I, I forgot the name, but the Mufti Azam of Ottoman Empire gives the advice to Khalifa that destroy the astronomy lab. You know the astronomy lab where they were studying stars and looking at a telescope and all that. The Mufti Azam gives advice because this is satanic and destroyed it and he destroyed it that's the fall of science in the Muslim world 16th century we are now in 20th century 400 years ago and look into the last 400 years the Muslim which is 1.6 or 7 billion on this planet earth they have the most of the resources natural resources like oil gas coal uh, is in, in the Islamic land all Middle East Kazakhstan Iran this area is full of natural resources if they would have progressed in science and technology they could have been the greatest superpower on earth they, is Islamic law would, would have been implemented all over the world but it's those ulama who are not that knowledgeable they virtually destroyed science 
Then I study history of in last 400 years. I even in the madaras I go and I see studying, and I see some of the madaras they teach astronomy. But when I picked up the book, this astronomy is almost three, four hundred years old. I mean, all the explanation of different thing is three hundred years old. This astronomy is gone way ahead. Now it's far away. You know, all those modern things are totally not there because they are stuck in very old books. So they need to they need to revamp their courses and syllabus and curriculum and they, it has to be merged, both sciences. Now, in uh, coming back to uh, science, one of the things, now where the commonalities? The biggest question is this universe, how it is created? Let's see what science says. Uh, uh, first Islam says, Islam says, Allah says, kun fayakun out of nothing, he said, whole universe was created. And as, as I said, the universe is so big that nearest star is four light years away. That means light will take four years. And how big the universe is, visible from telescope, calculated very precisely, 13 billion light years. That means from one end of the universe, light goes to the other end, it takes 13 billion light year, 13 billion years from one year. But Allah said we created the sky. I will come to that, yeah. <laughs> okay. okay, first of all, the size of the universe, 13 billion years. That means this universe existed since 13 billion years. That's a scientific fact, very accurate theory. So accurate, so accurate that from multiple observation, from cosmic rays, from uh, observation, from many, many, many observation, it is unanimous throughout the scientific world they believe in astrophysics that it's created 13 billion years ago. Now how it was created? It was created by Big Bang. One bang happened. How long that bang took? A second? Not even second. Millionth of a second? Billionth of a second? trillionth of a second. It's so, uh, and out of what? Out of vacuum, nothing. It's called vacuum energy. There was nothing and out of that, somehow that vacuum energy exploded into a big bang. And everybody, all scientists in astrophysics, they believe about big bang. It's the most commonly accepted theory. The universe created. Exactly what Quran says, kun fayakun. I said, it's done. Yeah. Now the question is, second is, Brother says, six years I created this. Now, uh, eh? six, days. six days. days. Uh, yeah. yeah, six days. I thought about this in the Bible, also in Quran. Try to make some sense that how. So it took 13 billion years. Now the first thing which created, and this is all observation, all scientific observation, there is no discrepancy. If you have a background of physics, I can explain to you. The first thing created is purely energy. Energy, you see there are two things, matter and energy. Matter is, this is matter, all this is matter. Energy, light is energy, no mass. So energy created into matter, how this transform. Big Bang happened and in a very short time, these basic constituents, basic building blocks, which is called electron, proton, neutron, they form, it took certain time, it is a whole timeline, it took certain, certain uh, hours or days. And then the first element was hydrogen, hydrogen gas, which is uh, you burn for fuel, hydrogen gas, it's very common, the whole sun is made of hydrogen. All stars are made of hydrogen, most common object. So after this hydrogen was produced, it compressed and formed the star. Okay, just like our sun, stars. Those stars burned for billions, of, for billions of years. And then after they burned out, they exploded, gas went around. What happened to gas? Again compressed slowly, 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 they formed. Now, when it burns, it produces helium, other element, all the way up to iron. 
and then it compresses again and then it explodes. So, so next generation of star come. The first generation, purely hydrogen, only hydrogen star. Then second generation, then third generation, then fourth generation. How many? Six. Six. Good. Six generation. The present star which you see in our galaxy, they are six generation. That means they were gas, form, blown, and then they formed again. Okay, that's also scientific principle. So when Allah said, I created in six days, it was my day of like, this day you say sun is revolving around earth, okay, from morning till evening. It's the six stages. Each stage is, uh, and it's a very accurate science, believe me. Because I wrote a paper on that, how planet earth and stars they form. Like there is a theory, you, know, you calculate, model in computer and calculate, okay. Not our days. Yes. Six so, days equal 50,000. Well, day. again, that again, though, a year and all that, but it's a six stages. Yeah. Okay? The, the stars, this universe, these stars are formed in the galaxy. These stars, they are collect, collection of stars is called galaxy, where 10 to the power 11, which is 100 billion stars in one galaxy. And then these galaxies are far away from each other, you know. So there are billions and billions of galaxies. These stars, they live their life and after they burn, they blow off, it's called supernova, which happens in some galaxy all the time. We observe. Every couple of years, some star blows off and we take picture, we measure thing, we see how they're expanding. Very precise science. So this is Yomul Qiyamah there? Yes. <laughs> Yomul is going on in one star or the other. It's called supernova. 1973, big supernova happened in our galaxy and we took picture and all that, you know. And then when they explode, the gamma ray burst and all those measurements are there. Now, so this is a second, but I'm not saying this is that precise. This is, again, my interpretation. I'm wrong maybe. You know, another thing in science is anything I can say could be wrong because new factor, new theories better can improve on that. But there is no contradiction. I have never found in my whole scientific life any contradiction between Quran and science. Whatever Quran says, it's, maybe we don't understand. Just like Rasulullah in last khutbah, in uh, Khutbatul Vida, he said, you know, take this message and who are here, listen, and take it to the one who are not here and transform it to the next generation. Maybe the following generation down the line understand this better than you are. Okay? He said this thing. So, what does mean that we understand better? Um, I don't think so, but maybe our future generation will understand better. But, I, uh, whatever Quran, little bit I know or I studied from ulama, I haven't found any discrepancy between uh, science. The, another bigger, bigger problem with, with biologists Race, evolution or creation. There is a famous scientist Darwin. He came up with a theory that human being evolved from some mammal, some some small life form started in the sea, crawled on the earth, start walking like monkey, and from monkey to apps and like human being, you know. His not ours. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, don't get, you, you, another thing, science, you listen everything, analyze it, understand it. Now, one of the questions which I normally ask them, I say, okay, if evolved, why didn't monkey evolve? I mean, what was wrong with them? They should have evolved too. Why the monkeys left unevolved, still monkeys, and apes are still apes. And what happened to dinosaur? I mean, they were on Earth uh, when they were dinosaur. We know dinosaurs were there because we have bones and structures. And then they all destroyed. And that means some asteroid hit the planet Earth, and all the life form got killed. Whatever dinosaur animals were running on planet that Earth. Yeah, that's artificial. So that means that uh, uh, if there were, were there humans at that time? I don't think so, because they are very old. 
Human being came much later than that. Much, much later. It's not very far. Human are very new creature on earth. So, uh, but science has not yet discovered the arrival of Adam al-Islam so far. We have to rely on Quran and other holy books that uh, Adam al-Islam was sent on earth, you know. Now what form, how, whether he was just from heaven on earth, but at least evolution theory, the way it is described may not be correct because it has no exact scientific proof. Yes, we are all evolving. I mean, if I see my life when I was a kid till now when I'm almost 60 years old, you know, a lot of evolution, a <laughs> lot of evolution. I've seen a lot of things change. We have seen just like internet only 10 years ago. Uh, how Life is evolving every second. There's nothing wrong. And even new disease, new, I'm not expert in medical science. I think a lot of doctors here, they are more knowledgeable. But uh, many diseases which are now maybe 100 years or 1000 years, they were not here. So we evolve and genetically we evolve and our, our structure evolve. But uh, uh, different species they involve. Some species go away. Uh, but this subject of biology, I'm not that expert, you know, so I'll leave it to that. Uh, but as far as physics and chemistry is concerned, I try to explain. So now I don't want to take it very long. I know you are tired and it's uh, Wednesday, tomorrow you have to go. Yes. So I, I close the talk here. The one thing before closing I like to say, it's the duty of all Muslims, <laughs> all Muslims to get all knowledge. Not only, yes, memorizing Quran is an excellent thing if we can do that. I wish the people I admire them who memorized. I could not do it, although I tried many, many times, even I still try. But memorizing Quran, understanding Quran, learning about this is great, about fit, but learning science is paramount amount. Somehow Muslim left this thing 300 years ago, not our generation, our three, four generations ago, they abandoned physics, uh, they abandoned science. Now they are picking up around the world. Now we have to do extra effort. One of the professor, Jewish professor in UC Irvine, uh, he says, you know, I said, you know, what's the reason? All the Jewish professor I see in university, scientists, great scientists, they're Jewish. Is it something you teach in the religion that you have to learn science, physics, math? And he says, after Second World War, when we went through Holocaust, we realized in order to survive in this world, we have to learn all the advanced subject and we have to dominate. Otherwise, we don't want another Holocaust. Same to the Muslim, to all the brothers. Please send your children to learn science. It's duty in Islam to learn knowledge because Quran says, You know, it's over and over, and just like the dua you said, Rabbi Zidni, Ilman Kasiran, we pray. So, all alum is part of religious duty. And if we go and see our Islam, as I mentioned, Imam Abu Hanifa. They produce great scientists of their time. So, we should produce our science at every locality, at every community, wherever we are. We should make sure our new generation should be so advanced that they should get the right place in this world. Whatever is going on nowadays in the Muslim world, we all are aware. I don't have to emphasize that, but it's a, it's a, it's a very tough life on Muslims and that's because we are behind technologically. Yes. We are not advanced as Europe or as uh, America. Give you a quick example of Japan. I was three months in Japan on a tour from the government to visit all the universities and all the industry and when I went there I saw they are so indulged in knowledge. I mean, they, it's everywhere they study, every, even train, schools. They, they study knowledge and especially science and they and wh why they happened because in the second world war when US dropped two, two bombs destroy the cities 
they realize that in this world if they want to succeed or survive even they have to be advanced such a tiny country small country you know nagasaki and hiroshima yeah nagasaki so since it changed their their thought the whole nation got changed so muslim have to change too and i pray on this point that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us this wisdom and knowledge amen jazakum allah khair thank you very much allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the quran he says fa khalafa min ba'dihim khalfun adha'u as-salat adha'u as-salat wa tabau shahawat fa sawfa yalqawna ghayr generation after generation he leave the deen behind and this is why the generation after generation the science going high and the deen going down because we do not make in da'wah enough we do not make it like he said tahfiz quran and sharia and fiqh and the standard during this is private question during you teaching as a professor in the college you realize a lot of muslim come from 25 years ago when i came to california from massachusetts we realize the message mashallah growing up and mashallah every corner right now before when you looking for friday prayer one hour to go to the masjid maybe more to find one masjid on the old side so did you realize in the college the muslim people because i saw in you ucr hijab lot of girls <coughs> yes yeah, it's a very very good question actually you're right i 30 years when i came there was uh, we used to borrow a room in the church at UC Irvine to pray on Juma prayer, you know, Salat al Juma. Yes. Um, there was not too many masajid. Alhamdulillah, there are too many masajid, too many schools. One of the positive thing, because I've been teaching young generation all these years, you know, we have all the kids in Riverside community, one way or the other, they have been my student from time to time. So I've seen them growing. Alhamdulillah, the the new generation in this country are far better muslim than when i was a young boy okay i compare with my young generation when i was young that means in 60s or 50s and 60s in 70s the the knowledge which we gain or the education system we have was not very good as compared to now we have even to go to public school our kids american public school but at least when they come and they're knowledgeable they are attached to the deen majority i'm not talking about general i never try to generalize okay take a, uh, you know see majority of them they pray five time and the girls i see they do hijab and and you can see even the university uh, muslim student very active very alhamdulillah they are in this country Uh, being uh, better I, i compare them in this country versus a muslim country like pakistan or egypt or those countries and when i see young generation there young generation here this is alhamdulillah very good and uh, it's a positive thing uh, allah subhanahu wa taala brought us in this country for a purpose okay remember this thing it you know it's we are not here whatever whatever reason we came for money or whatever in this country there is a reason we are here okay and it's a great duty okay i hope this answers the question any other concept question uh, you know, uh, like 13 billion years ago uh, years it is the dimension of the universe or this is the creation 13 billion years ago creation it was so tiny that big bang says that all the energy was focused on a point and it exploded the way we know Why 13? Because it is expanding. The universe is expanding. Not only expanding, it is accelerating. You know that means it is gaining speed. And the question is, why it is gaining speed? Where the energy is coming? It's called dark energy and dark matter. That means all the matter we see is only a fraction of what we don't see, and we don't know what is dark matter. Same as it is ex- accelerating because. there is a dark energy so this is a very hot topic nowadays in science what is a dark matter and what is a dark energy we don't know we have no explanation for that but we know it is there from the rotation from measurement we know there is a mass we know there is a dark energy because there is indirect evidence but what is that that's why we call it dark so it's it's expanding so it was all compressed to one point Science have any idea about the dimension of the universe? Yeah, 
That's a third. Okay, the length. Okay, length is called in in this. Then the length becomes. See, it's like an inch, foot, mile. This is a normal when you measure. So in this large dimension, you you set up a new scale. It's called light year. Light year is a length. Okay, it's not year. Light year is a length. Where light takes from here to here one year. So if you want to multiply 186,000 times 365 times uh, 24 times 60 times 60, this number is a huge number. You cannot, it will not fit on your calculator. That's the length, one length, one light year. So what is the size? 13 billion light year. That size. 13 billion. Size of the universe, yes. If you have, go measure it. <laughs> <laughs> so if you sit down on the paper, no, we do this. We do all this stuff. We give to a student to calculate exactly what is the sign. And this is so accurate that you have measured. You have seen light coming from 13 light. Maybe the light coming from the source, the source is gone. You know, the star over there on the edge of the universe. But that's this universe. Then there is a question. Is there any other universe like that? Parallel universe, multiple universe. So maybe there are many, many universes, you know, parallel. And it's a very complex, very complicated question. But anyway. Uh, question in Aqidah, brother, in Aqidah, Deen. You, when you start, you said, you know, the, the, the pillar of the Islam. The last one you said, al baath al-Baad al-Mawt. Baath al-Baad al-Mawt. But after we die, we're going to back again. If someone, non-Muslim, came now and converts Islam and they ask you, approve it to me. Is anybody dying back again and said you have a life? How are you going to approve this? Well, that's why it is called Iman. You have to believe it. Rather, Ghaib. Yeah. Believe in Ghaib. Ghaib, yeah. Qu Quran starts from Zalik al-Kitab. Ghaib. 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 You believe in unseen. You believe in unknown. Yes. But in the Quran also, some people die and back again. Remember, Ahl and the people, the, the Surah Al-Baqarah, no, no, but Musa, no. he hit him and he lied again and says, this is the... No, no, but you are right, but that's yeah. written in Quran. Again, you have to believe on that, you know, but it's not, you haven't seen I believe, it. Okay. I believe, but... Uh, well, you have to believe without question. <laughs> without that story, you have to believe it. Because that's what, if you don't, that's a part of Iman. Iman is, when I tell my students, I say, no, Iman is you have to believe. Yes. Then you move forward. Like the order from yeah. your wife, you have to obey. Like this exactly, you have to. Be because if you don't believe on this, yeah. then uh, then it's very difficult to explain. Maybe some time in the future, but I don't think anybody will know the answer of this question scientifically. Anyway. Uh, before? Yeah. No. I yeah. Example like uh, I talked to some people. Yeah. And then I have it from my friends who say, whenever, whenever the person is in his mother womb, Somebody come and whisper to him, tell him, hey, little boy, or little girl, whatever, little baby, you're going to get out of, you're going to get out of this universe you have to something in infinity. Mm. He's not going to believe you because he's inside the stomach, he's eating, he's doing everything. But here we are, when he got out from his mother's stomach, here we are, look. When yeah, so that's an indirect proof. That's a, that's a, that's a when you go to the Barzakh, it's bigger uh, than the dunya. <laughs> when you go to the Jannah, bigger than the Barzakh. We always go into the... That's what I said. I mean, somebody whispered to the baby, he will never see it. Nobody knows where it is. Yes, he will never believe it. He asked him the same yeah. question. He says, what, what day day of judgment, you know? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, we know the answer. Okay, we know the answer. Friday, anyway. Okay, yeah. The, the, this is, what is the day of Barzakh, okay? We know the sun, the star, yeah. is burning at one day. Actually, that's my specialty that's of nice. uh, energy, how the energy is produced in the core of the sun. And we try to produce the same energy on Earth, and we did like a hydrogen bomb. Wow. Hydrogen bomb is exactly what's happening in the sun. Now, if hydrogen bomb will destroy the people, and we try to control it, make a tiny control so that we can produce electricity. Oh. And if we do, we will solve the world energy problem. Because it's a hydrogen and hydrogen, the whole water, this water is made of hydrogen, H2O. Oh, the whole sea is full of hydrogen, so we just take water and produce electricity from water by thermonuclear fusion reaction. Oh. And if you take one gallon of water, you can make energy equal to 300 gallon of 
oil or gasoline. This is very accurate. That's my specialty. I actually have a patent and I have invented and I wrote 100 papers on that. So I'm expert in this area. So now we know what rate in the sun hydrogen is fusing and giving energy. Very accurately. So accurately that by fourth digit. Wow. So accurate. Okay, we have computer code. I put the numbers I give you. We know exactly how long the sun will live and after that it will burn out, it will explode. Once it will explode like a supernova, it will take this planet and all the planets up to Jupiter, it will become gas, evaporate. Just like uh, which says the mountain will become like smoke. Yes. The uh, yeah. Jibal. Okay? So we know exactly. But the question is this, that is uh, the day of the, maybe human race will finish long before that because that's billions of years. Yes. So I don't think our activities, our actions, mm. the way we live, the way we destroy our planet, use the resources, oil, gas, environment, yes. we may destroy long before. Like the nearest uh, planet is called one is called Mars and one is called Venus. Venus normally, when you see the moon, just near the moon, very bright star appears, yes. you know. That is called Venus. Venus is exactly on the size of the Earth, just like Earth. Same size, actually. Yeah, there? Well, that's a big question. If it is same size, almost, it's closer to the sun a little bit, but not that far. Same, it's called a sister planet. And we send a satellite there. And when the satellite went and dropped on the atmosphere, it was burned before it touched the ground. Whoa. Because atmosphere is very dense, full of carbon dioxide. No, full of carbon dioxide. You know carbon dioxide, all of you guys know when you burn something. Okay. So it is so thick. And since carbon dioxide, if it is thick, absorbs all the solar heat, it's so hot that the parachute burned before even hitting the ground. So there is a theory that maybe it was teeming with the people and they uh, created so much pollution that whole, so whole life form destroyed. So no life form. No life form exists on that uh, planet Venus. Uh, maybe different life. So maybe the Earth become like planet Venus. So it answers your second question. Maybe day of judgment or end of the our life form happened maybe much earlier. Some people say it may happen in a couple of hundred years, maybe 50 years. Uh, like if the nuclear war starts, it can finish very quickly. An asteroid can hit, gone. You know, another thing can happen. The asteroid can hit, just like dinosaur will disappear. That could happen. Uh, the oil and gas will disappear after 100 years or 200 years, max. That's it. That's it. So that means, you know, normal lifespan is 100. Our grand grandchildren will have a tough time, no oil, no gas. Unless we discover this new energy source, which I am working on that. And if that works, then you don't need oil and gas, you just draw the water. So, that, uh, so, Day of Judgment, only Allah knows. That's what Quran says, that's what Hadith says. There are different scenarios. Rasulullah said the Friday anyway. Okay. But as much as uh, President Bush is here, he's going to take the gas from the Iraq anyway. There's no problem. That's very small. <laughs> yes, brother. Uh, you said in the beginning that there are, there are two groups. Groups of scientists who, who are most of them uh, do not believe in God and group of uh, regular person who is one of them do not believe in uh, science. You know, give a good example of how it is being who is scientists and Muslim at the same time. But at the same time, in this gen in that generation, there are great scientists in the Muslim world who start to deviate from Islam yeah. and they start to study philosophy and other type of study of science. Uh, so my question is, what is the problem of science? Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, Inna wa yaqsha Allah min ibadil ulama. So why when they start more on the science, you find this deviated from? Very, very good question. I really, I, I really recommend you commend you on that. What's the problem? Uh, one of my teacher, brilliant scientist from MIT, PhD, and I loved his teaching math, very good grasp on physics, and he's very famous in Pakistan. Totally atheist, 
do not believe in religion at all. So I dis we have used to have discussion days and nights when I was in university and still whenever I go in the conference, we have this discussion. So and I thought about it, why they are so bright, so intelligent, so knowledgeable, why they don't believe religion? Uh, my answer to that is because they know, they have no knowledge of religion. I am the scientist, I studied science, produced 10 PhD students all my life in science. But I believe in more than, I think I, I have a more stronger belief on Allah SWT and religion than maybe we don't have scientific knowledge. Uh, because I have the knowledge, if you don't have any knowledge, you don't know. You don't know a medical science, if you are a medical, not a medical student, you don't know medical science. Whatever doctor tells you, you, you will do. So these scientists, they get trained in their mind, are training life form, only believe what you see what you observe, only one, anything other than that is metaphysics, meta science, no explanation, don't believe, okay, so because it's trained whole their life and religious knowledge is zero, no understanding, no background, even majority of them, they don't know algebra was invented by Al-Khwarzmi, they think it's invented by Newton, yeah. because Newton invented calculus, you know, you must be a student, you know calculus, pre-calculus, so it was invented by Newton. So they think it's a more advanced form of algebra. You know, so the thing he invented, but it was al -Khwazmi. So the, the education system is not correct. Uh, this modern education, public school, if those students go there and no religious education, their moral values and as a human being, they, they lack. Their only purpose of life is make more money, have bigger house and have big and big. So, uh, uh, this has to combine. Okay, that's why Alhamdulillah Muslims here, they do extra effort. Okay, send to public school and then bring it to centers like this or somewhere. So, we give them both education. Uh, but you have to learn the knowledge. You have to learn Quran, Hadith. If you don't, you can be a Nobel laureate. You, you won't be that smart. <laughs> I, you know, I'm not a good doctor, you know, if you ask me some medical problem, I'm sifr, zero, because I never learned that. <laughs> if, so, I'm just pretending now I know all the medical science, that is, so I have to humble myself. That's exactly, those scientists, no religious knowledge, no concept, no background, no history, no, nothing. That's why. Uh, do you compare uh, man and an angel? Because the generally the rule to compare two things between any two bodies, when both bodies or both things, both persons or whatever, uh, they are composed from the same material. Okay, very, very, yeah, I got your point. So, yes, yes, you, no, 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 you compare. You compare, yes. We have light, brother. The human being, like the doctor says, from the dirt, but we have light. The Quran is light. Yeah. Angels around is light. Right. Our hearts, inshallah, our hearts is light. Light, yeah. We are made of uh, solid liquid water. We know that. These two things we can see. Gas, we inhale. Without air, we are dead. And on top of that, light. We are light. Uh, and the light is a big spectrum. This is a visible light, very small spectrum. Below that is infrared and radio waves. And up is X-rays and gamma rays and cosmic rays, so it's a big spectrum, so angels are made of light, but we don't know which spectrum, not visible, can be, but yes, they can be compared, they are just like embodiment of human being, and also the jinn, I didn't discuss about jinn, jinn are made of fire, we say, what is fire, fire is the hot air, so most probably jinn are made of air, you know, hot air, and take any shape, because they are bound to earth, they cannot, just like we are bound to earth, we cannot just fly in the space, so does the jinn, they can only go up to stratosphere, you know, and then come back. And they, there are evidence they went to stratosphere. So yes, they can be compared. They have intelligence, just like human, but not as intelligent as we are. Human being is Ashraful Makhlukat, most intelligent. Okay? That's it. Wait, we can see angels. Do you never see angels, brother? Do you never see? Also. Rasulullah saw. No, Rasulullah saw. Not we, yeah. Okay. About the jinn, doctor said the jinn. We take here two hours uh, lecture about the jinn, how you like and how you show it. And you show it in a different tradition. 
usually like snake or black dog or something. Like yes, they can change anything. When you read the hadith in the Sunnah, many, many hadith, the angel came as the man and he do this and he did this and advise and he asked a question. The man, he have, uh, you know, the no hair and the other, akra and the other one who has cane and uh, give him animal and back to the... But the story, angel came as a human being. Even. But really, Dr. Uh, uh, he promised me he will bring you the laptop and he's showing us everything, but he didn't bring you a laptop. So next visit you have to bring your laptop yeah, and showing sure. us the science and the reality. <coughs> yes. Any questions, brother, before you eat? Thank you. We thank you very much. I look, I look, I look, I see. I see a world of beauty. I touch, I touch, I touch, I feel I feel the world around so real And everything I do I dedicate to you Cause you made me I am for you I listen, 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 I hear I 